Okay, praise the Lord. Good stuff. Good to hear uh, some good things in the, in the gifts as normal. It's a very privileged position that we're in, you know. Cecilia mentioned in her testimony that she'd gone to many different Pentecostal churches. I would say 99.9999999 don't operate the gifts. Mm -hmm. Makes us very different. It gives us a uh, uh, very privileged. So, quick recap uh, on the gifts: uh, be strong, not good courage. And you know, we sung that course. And be about the Lord's business. And uh, next, we have answers to the world's problems. It's a big thing, you know. We don't have to fear. Uh, we stand in the strength of the Lord. It's not on our own strength. Even the angels have our backs. As we speak, or the Lord at least wants us to go and speak the words of life, as it says in Acts. And um, we're reminded not to set limits, because through the Lord all things are possible. Uh, walk and lean on the Holy Spirit. That's that's what walking in the Holy Spirit is, is that you lean towards the principles of God. Uh, lean on me, says the Lord. Uh, on the prophecy side. Uh, be healthy in the Lord, you know, and, and being healthy is, is when it's not all about yourself. That's usually when you get the most health. Scientifically, that's proven, by the way. Um, uh, speak, speak the Lord, or spread the Lord's knowledge, and, and, and don't forget to pray for healing. You know, you've had it in the past. Maybe sometimes we struggle with things and we go to the uh, uh, pharmaceutical before the Lord. Uh, trust and obey. The word of God endure like a soldier. You know, the soldiers have to they train for all environments. And the environment isn't always sunny. It's not a sprint. We're going to have good days and bad days. We've got to keep fighting whatever life throws at us. Uh, and if we keep going, you know, we'll come out to talk today. Uh, you will see the kingdom of God. We have the keys, but you've got to exercise them. No point in having all the knowledge. And the wisdom what to do if you don't apply it it's actually a waste a waste of time and the last one is 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 the lord is the the master architect you know in life things go wrong if you haven't noticed in the workplace things go wrong and you get 10 and people around the table and they're all you know thinking their opinions more important than the next fellas and and then some bright spark says hey let's go back and look at the draw and see what it was meant to be and sometimes it's just as simple as that it's come back to god's word and say let me look at that principle again why isn't this working um right love the gifts uh let's go to the talk um so we we look a little bit at um a hope and um, you know to live in faith you need hope and they're actually very much intertwined uh faith and hope as we'll see towards the end and no need to go there if you want to go to um romans i'm going to quote a couple of scriptures in the meantime um oh, Um, yes, in Proverbs 3 or 13, verse 12, what's that one? <laughs> um, it talks about that hope deferred makes the heart sick, but when the desire cometh, it, it, it is a tree of life, and of course, the tree of life is very much. Uh, bringing us back to the Garden of Eden and also bringing us to the book of Revelation because it says he that overcome it will eat of the tree of life and very much maybe the desire has to be lined up the desires that you hope and need to be towards where the tree of life is because that's where we want them to come from you know those desires you can get other the wrong desires which come from not such a good place, the natural place. And, you know, there's times where I've prayed about things and it didn't actually happen. 
and I almost willed it to happen and kind of put my hope in that it would happen. But it didn't. It didn't go the way I thought it was. And I did find that there's a couple of moments in life, as we've all had, where my heart was sick, to be honest. And it can creep up every now and again because it's not that, uh, again, maybe in the gifts sometimes, it's just like, and it's just the way it's, it's, it's just your lot to deal with. It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that God loves somebody more than, than me because maybe I didn't get something that I thought I was going to get. That's not the way God operates. It really, at the end of the day, the one prayer I always think and said in the past that the Lord will answer is if you guarantee it, if you pray for an opportunity to spread the gospel, you will get it. Guarantee it. Well, you take it is another thing. But it will, it will happen. But there's going to be moments that you, you sometimes get caught in this, this um, place of desires. And you're so, sometimes wondering, is it of the Lord or is it of Anthony or whoever, whatever your name is? You aren't all blessed with the name Anthony. Mm. There's only one other member in this room that's yes, blessed with the name Anthony. That's Tony for those that don't understand Tony short for Anthony. Yeah. And, and sometimes that can stop things. You can get stuck because that desire didn't come to pass because it makes your heart sick and you, you stop paddling or peddling. Uh, somebody said to me yesterday, Einstein said something about it, life is like if you stop peddling, you lose your balance. You know, and that's that's true. You become just this piece of driftwood, driftwood going down the sea of life. You know, and you, you don't want to be there. It can happen from time to time. There's times where you're you're going against the current and everything's going well, and then you kind of it's almost like your natural mind brings you back. God didn't do that for you. And brings you kind of you stop like it, it, it freezes you. It kind of lets the fear get in, and and it and it kind of almost sometimes for a, de a degree could paralyze you spiritually, and that's why it's important to get back onto the bike. And um, what this one like? The world in order this morning. <laughs> um, I looked at them twice, <laughs> like Santa Claus. Check on the notes twice. Um, in in Psalm forty two, I might just pull this up on my phone. Uh, you're you're already in the uh, in the uh, Psalms were already mentioned today by Cecilia, and we got a, a mention. Yeah, there's in Psalm forty two, verse five and verse eleven. No need to go there. It repeats itself again, and it says, "Why art thou cast down, O my soul?" And why are thou disquieted in me? And it's like there's, there's this battle going on in the soul. It's almost like the soul, it's like to a degree, David's almost having this kind of argument with his soul and trying to encourage It's almost like you're talking to yourself, trying to encourage yourself. Will you get up and get on with it? Come on. You know, it's, you know, you, if somebody's seen it from the outside, they probably could put you in a white, a white jacket. But within yourself, it's this kind of battle going on sometimes where the soul is almost arguing with itself, <laughs> trying to say, come on, come on. And the next part is hope down God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. And sometimes you see that in people. You can tell, you know, in the workplace or even in the assemblies, you can sometimes see, that's what we look, don't we? You look at each other's face. You see your brother or your sister. They're not quite, the smile isn't there or the, it's not quite as radiant as you normally expect them to be because in general, we're kind of a smiley, outgoing, happy people. That's what the saints are all the time. Not have to go around with a silly Cheshire, Cheshire grin on your face like religion. Um, but in general, and it is a good thing to, to know, maybe there's something going on inside, deep inside, 
there's something sometimes even in the natural with people in the world you know you think they have a problem with you but there's actually a hundred things going on behind the closed door mm -hmm. so sometimes but it shows on the countenance it shows on the face sometimes as a side note if somebody's saying something that you don't like it's good to put on an angry countenance to push back the north wind i think it says and elsewhere it's just a side note anyway you're in romans now most of us are familiar it, 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 there is you know there's a difference between biblical hope and a natural hope like there, there is a lot of good and a lot of a lot of things in history that people wouldn't have been able to accomplish without a natural hope because even in the natural when people don't have hope it's actually an awful place to live and then we have like most things spiritually we have another level of hope that is beyond the hope that this world has even though i dare say that just like we say we often say that you know the world is terrible and all that kind of things and there are terrible things happening in the world but there's also a lot of good things that are still in the world and there's a lot of even in this country that's struggling with things we are still in a fantastic country when you compare it to the rest of the places never forget that and um, but it's the same with hope you know you're you're sometimes going maybe for an interview you're hoping you know that the time is you're kind of cutting it a bit fine you're hoping there's no traffic on the road so that you can make it there's an uncertainty into the future that you're gone it's almost like the to a degree that's 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 always there whether it's spiritual hope or whether it's natural hope it's tends to be in the future and on the world side there tends to be an uncertainty that something might or mightn't happen fair to say that's how we kind of look at it and um, and then we, we most of us are familiar with the story of uh, Abraham and Sarah you know that Abram when he was before he became Abraham uh was Abram actually meant exalted father Abraham I think means father of a multitude so even his first name <laughs> exalted father because the names sometimes are almost like a prophecy there's hope in the name how dare I say because it tends to come to pass when when the names are named in the Bible Achan meant troubler that's what he did he brought trouble to the camp when he took off the Babylonian garment um, and so uh, Abraham and Sarah of course were, were promised that or Abraham that of his own seed in that marriage would come forth the fruit a seed that would become a multitude like the stars in heaven the sand on the on the beach etc and we know in the in the fellowship because we know from the prophecy side of things that we just have to look at some of the flags around the world and we see that that's come to pass we see the stars in australia we see the stars in america etc and we see that it's come a multitude we see that the the that britain became a, a commonwealth of nations so we know that that name down the line but bring yourself back now to abraham he's tried it his own way by going down the, the route of hagar has the son ishmael it still is a problem today with the other side of the seed when it comes or at the moment when the lord says you're gonna have a son tell tell sarah they are dead inside in the natural sense like where's the hope it's gone they've tried everything he, they, they've tried on their own and now they've come to a point where the hope the natural hope has now ceased because you can't do any more you're beyond it's beyond your comprehension and it's beyond your limits kind of came a little bit out of the gifts and in Romans chapter 4 this is obviously referring back to that moment in time and in verse 17 
Yeah, in verse 17, I'm going to read it in the Amplified. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. He was appointed our father in the sight, in the sight of God in whom he, he believed, who gives life to the dead and speaks of the non-existing things that he has foretold and promised as if they already existed. You see, even his name, when God named him Abraham, in God's sight, it was already done. It's just he, the video or the YouTube or whatever way you want to put it wasn't ready to be played at that particular moment in time. But in, in the heavens, it was already written. It was already declared that this would happen. Um, and in verse 18, for Abraham, human reason for hope being gone. Hope, so his, that's what I'm saying, his hope in the natural of his capabilities, of his abilities, whatever. He couldn't make Sarah have a child. Because he was nearly 100, 99, I think. And Sarah was well past the age as well. It's beyond comprehension. It can't happen. It can't happen in the natural. You can hope and hope and bang your head against the wall and do all sorts of things. But hope in the natural is evaporated here. It's extinguished. And that's what makes this distinction between the natural hope and the spiritual hope. Um, in 19, he did not weaken in faith when he considered it utter impotence of his own body, which was as good as dead because he was about 100 years old or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's deadened womb. Now, sometimes I'll just make a point. When you're actually reading the story in the Old Testament, you don't quite get that insight. You know, she laughs, and he's 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 probably laughing as well. <laughs> Stays fun as God from. It's, it's like, he, but somewhere, he, you don't quite get the insight of what's happening inside of him in the Old Testament story, I dare say, until it's expounded in the New Testament. And it's sometimes like us spiritually, you know, you, 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 sometimes you can't quite get it, but there was something still inside of him. The thing was, is deep down it appears he really believed the word he believed god's word it's a bit like when uh, philip was alluded to isaac on wednesday mm. it's the same thing he didn't quite know how it was going to happen but he said god will provide and uh, of course that's a it's a, a symbolism of, of 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 jesus rising from the dead and this is almost the same um so no unbelief or distrust made him waver or doubting, questioning concerning the promise of God. But he grew stronger and was empowered by faith as he gave praise and glory to God. And that's why he was fully satisfied and assured that God was able and mighty to keep his word and to do what he promised. We live in a country in an age where you hear promises left right and center but no one can give you assurances hey they can't even get the weather right <laughs> do you know what i mean so how would you expect them to get the economy um that is why his faith was credited with righteousness or right standing with god so you know sometimes just to take a step back and to think yes maybe you're having a moment or maybe you don't Maybe you've had it in the past, maybe you'll have it in the future where this natural hope has ceased or extinguished, and you can't quite figure out how it's going to work out. But yet, God made a promise. Somewhere, God has made a promise. If you hold on to a promise that God has made in His Word, He has to honor. He has to honor. You know? And, uh, 
it's very reassuring to be able to say, because the world doesn't have this. Yes, there's a, an element. I say, we we look at something in a minute, where you can go as far with your hope that, and do amazing things in the natural. But this this is on Borola. This is just beyond, you know, beyond 2000. We used to watch the program when we were kids of looking at stuff that was in the future. That's what God is doing. Sometimes it's beyond our comprehension to understand that, yeah, Jesus is going to burst through the clouds one day and this age is going to end and we're going to rule and reign in the millennium. Yeah, I believe the word because... You know, I got filled with the spirit because I spoke in tongues and, you know, I got a healing and I've seen relationships fixed. And that gives us that confidence and that expectation that God can keep his word. You know, that's that's an amazing thing to have. Spiritually, even to be centered in that gives a lot of stability. To us to be able to fight each day is to, to be able to, to hold that. I mean, and sometimes I think we okay, don't always grasp that pocket to myself as, as much as anyone. And in, in, uh, in no need to go there if you want to go to keep. No, actually, we go to uh, unquote future. Let's go to Lamentations. In uh, today. In Proverbs 14, verse 32, it says, The wicked is driven away in his wickedness, but the righteous hope in his death. You know, my ne- one of my ne- old neighbors died this week back where I lived, you know. And you, you just think, you know, you, you, you hear the funeral, and you just think, you know, the limitations of life really comes home. Dan alluded to it in communion. Death, but we have hope. If one of us was to pass away today, you know, we'd be very, very sad in a natural sense. We have that hope. We have that thing. It's like a rope or something that you can cling on to and say, hallelujah. I've got something still to look forward to. We need things to look forward to. Even in the natural, it's good to have things. I actually think it's mentally very good to have things to look forward to. I'm a firm believer in mapping out your, not every day, but a few things in in your year, like camps and stuff, to have you to look forward to. You know, try and take each quarter of the year and have something to look. We, we Okay, I know I'm harping on about the rally. I'm not saying it's going to be the bee, the bees and the bee all and end all. That's the one that they <laughs> That's so Praise the Lord, I'm, ex- I'm, I'm trying to go in expecting good things. I believe good things will happen. But it's good mentally to have that. You know, we're looking forward to summer camp, not just camps, but even in the natural, to have little things to look forward to. And then on a spiritual level, how bigger is that? Have things to look forward to. That's what's the hope in you that makes people look and say, what is it? What is it about that? They're small, small in number, but hey, they got some. They got something. Can't quite put it on a on a on a on a piece of paper. Can't quite get my head around it. They see it. They see it. Uh, in the Ecclesiastes in chapter nine again, no need to go there. Uh, with the living there is hope, you know, even on the natural side of things. A living dog is better than a dead lion. So the lion may have been the king of the jungle while he was alive, <laughs> but he ain't no use when he's dead. Can't praise the Lord in the grave when you're asleep. Now is the time to do it. Don't be asleep in your walk. You know that keep. You gotta keep lighting the the the, the fires of hope within us. Oh, there's the scripture. Thanks for <laughs> <laughs> It's coming out now. Uh, it, you're in, already in Lamentations. But only yeah. chapter three. Now I've mentioned a fellow before, and I'll mention this because it really brings out the natural hope. And I just want to, because sometimes seeing the extent of how 
a nasal natural hope is really can give you a bit of an idea of what access we have to another level. Um, in, in Jeremiah 18 and verse 12, I'm going to quote this again. Uh, and they said, so sometimes you can have false hope. Sometimes people have no hope, as I said. Sometimes people have Bob Hope. And that's mm -hmm. just on TV. We probably can't remember Bob Hope and no hope. Mm -hmm. Bob Hope. Um, in, 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 this has kind of happened in the world. It happened towards the end of Judges when they took their eye off the Lord. It says, and they said, there is no hope, but we will walk after our own devices, and we will, everyone, do the imagination of his evil heart. Now, that's probably what's happened in society. The hope was kind of here. I can always kind of speak for Ireland. Um, I believe a lot of hope was killed when the testimony of the Catholic Church was found out. It destroyed a lot of hope in this country when the truth came out about it. And people are still recovering from that. I think spiritually, it would be fair to say, I had a, so th there was a couple of referendums in Ireland yesterday. Uh, I, I wouldn't tell anyone what way to vote, but I just remember the song from the 1990s. No, 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 no. <laughs> Uh -huh. Anyway, it was a subtle hint. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and somebody rang me on a, from the Independent or in a poll study. And I read to think it was a scam, but it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the questions she asked me was, is, what do I think the biggest concern with Ireland is at this moment of the time? And I says, it's the spiritual one. It's the spiritual emptiness that's in the country. I couldn't obviously go into it because yeah. it has to be quick answers. And and that's what's happened is everyone's now just doing it their own thing. I'll do it my way, like Frank Sinatra, mm -hmm. as he saw. I'll do it my way. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens when you see what people don't understand is you actually can't love your neighbor the way God intended it, unless you had to force them to love the Lord thy God with all the heart, soul, mind, and strength. Because you'll only do it when people are watching. But when you have God in society, you believe someone's always watching. Because people behave differently when people are watching them. Watch the cameras. When the cameras are on the road, everyone slows down. <laughs> and you keep to the law. That's a fact. Now, in the natural hope, and and maybe I've mentioned this fellow before, Victor Frankl, who, was, who wrote a book called Man's search for me and he'd been in the the nazi concentration camps in world war ii and uh he he goes through in the book you know he goes through his experiences and some of the things you can only imagine but one other thing just as a, a side note isn't it interesting i mentioned this last week but it is a thing to keep remembering when you're dealing with people because people don't believe in god now is is there is a natural moral code. And isn't it funny everybody thinks that the concentration camps were wrong? Where did that come from? Where does that talk come from? And in, in that camp, he, he goes through all these different moments where he, he's been, he's, he's, think about it. What they're trying to do is to break the hope of the people. That's what they're trying to do. It's fear. It's breaking down the hope and trying to destroy humanity. That's really what it's trying to do, because they, they have no value, except that they can work like a, a, like a machine. When the machine is broke, that's, that's the way they were viewed. And he has to keep fighting this. And even within that community, the scarcity of food, and you can imagine what people are like if there's no if law breaks down like as bad as people think governments and all that if there's no government then you see what's in mankind if there's no order you see what's in them you see what happens when it can be seen in dublin it starts off with a protest a while back and all of a sudden it turns into looting because it got because that's what happens is is the anyway without going into that 
so he he really goes in and he talks about like how he has to fight and how he has to he sees some guy giving it a little morsel to another guy in the camp. Now imagine that. But that, that's just an amazing thing to combat at the natural level against all hopelessness. And uh, he he makes the distinction that um, you know it is the, the the only thing that we have really choice over is our attitude. It's how you run a deal. You know, uh, there is always a healthy way to handle the situation. It's a nice way of putting it. There's a healthy way to handle the situation. Whatever situations come up in life. Um, and uh, um, so uh, a, a, another guy, and, and it, I've, this has probably been mentioned before, sometimes you can have the optimistic hope. What do I mean by that? I mean, in in war, in those concentration camps, they know they have a hope that the Allies are going to break them. They don't know when. There's uncertainty. You don't know what's going to happen in between that period of time. Whether you're going to be still alive <laughs> by the time they free you. And within that, you have moments where Easter or Christmas and stuff like that comes up. And people that tended to put their hope will be out by Christmas. The Allies will be here by Christmas 1943, let's say, or 44, but they didn't. And a lot of them died because they lost the hope to the number soared after Christmas. And sometimes it's very dangerous to set dates on that optimism. There's one guy in Vietnam, he was in uh, 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 Japanese, and he said the same thing. He said, you just got to take each day. And they fight each day and keep the hope. He used to, you know, with Victor Franco, when he's gone through, he wasn't sure that his wife was still alive on the outside. But he used to recall the moments they had and the moments that they will have to keep it lighting. Now, that's an amazing, but I'm not sure any of us would be able, to, I couldn't stand there and say I'd be able to do that. I mean, when I don't get fed, I don't get sleep. I'm not the, the nicest guy to be around. Um, so, um, but an amazing determination and a lot of it to, to do with mental strength. And then, you know, mm. here we come to Lamentations. Jeremiah is dealing with the fact that his society has been destroyed. Judah for all the prophecies he was given. It's going to happen. The Babylonians are coming. You've rejected God. You kicked him out. And now the Babylonians are coming. It's a given. But God will still look after you. He's still merciful that if you just go with the Babylonians, he'll still protect you in that time. And they rebel. That's why Zedekiah eventually loses his eyes when he goes to Babylon and calls the whole prophecy. Of the time our TV that coming on with Jeremiah to build the very first chapter of Jeremiah, if you missed it, it says to build, to plant. Actually, it says to pull down, to destroy, and then it goes to build and to plant. But if you just read the Bible, all as you see is is the pulling down. But God had made the promise, just like He made the promise to Abraham. It would come to pass, and it did. Just happened quite a bit outside of the pages of the scriptures. Still so came to fruition by moving the throne over from Israel to Ireland. But that's a that's another day's discussion. In Lamentations, he is in the depths of despair. He's in bitterness. I mean, if you just like naturally, is even being in the Lord. You know, if we were in the Ukraine. In 2021 or 22, was it? When was it a fight? 22? So if we were in there in 2021 or in Gaza, and life is just ticking along, ticking along, ticking along. Or maybe it's, we're back in 1912, 1913, we're in, you know, around Europe, and life is just ticking along. Boom. Changes. 
1920s to roaring 20s mm. boom 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 1929 bang depression in america wall street crash 1930s not, the, not that much of a distance and how things have changed but we've been lulled into the fact that we've had an amazing peace the pax usa since world war ii the peace of the usa just like the peace of the pax roma during the early Christian age that allowed the gospel to go out. So, so Jeremiah, what a guy. I mean, we find it tough going out to preach the gospel. And imagine, and, and in a way, we're in the same boat. Because we're saying, you don't know, buddy, whether you're going to have the shops open. Nobody knows. You can't tell the weather. Forecast. So how do we know what way the winds are blowing? And he's the same. And he says in, in verse uh, in verse 18, he says, And I said, my strength and my hope is perished from the Lord. He's looking around at his people. There's no kids. Still Lamentations chapter 3. I just said that an hour ago. <laughs> but the problem was is I filled in that space. Um. And uh, here he is, he's, he, he's, he's, you know, I have forgotten what good and happiness are. Remembering my affliction and my misery, the wormwood and the gall, that's really, you know, the absolute affliction and misery that he's, he's now in the midst of. And he says, my soul has them still in remembrance. He's earnestly remembering this country, probably. And it's humbled within me. At least he humbled, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. That's the problem. He says, God says, the proud will burn in the oil. That sounds a bit harsh in, in Malachi. But uh, and then he goes, This is a bit like David with Ziggalak. He's in despair, he's in distress, just doesn't look good. His natural hope is gone. This I recall to my mind. Therefore, I have hope. You know, you're down. The countenance is gone. It looks just misery outside. Everything's miserable when he's looking. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. God always leaves a space for his people. He always will have a fire exit. He will always have a route out for his people. And this is an amazing thing because from that little light of Jeremiah there, the throne of David exists today in the Western world. Which is, you know, you've gone from a little spark here. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. Hallelujah, that God is good. Hallelujah, that God pumps you with hope. That's what you want them, pumping you with hope, pumping you when you're down, pumping the Holy Spirit's pumping there like a heart, pumping hope into your veins, into your thoughts, into, into you seeing beyond what's in front of you. And he said, the Lord is my portion, say it my soul. Here we go again, the soul having this conversation, just like we started off with. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him to the soul that seeketh him. That's all they had to do in the millennium. People are going to look around and say, you what? You stupid, stupid people. That's all you had to do was to listen to God and it was for good. And you, you threw it out the, out the window, as the man says. Um, quickly, Time is starting to accelerate. Mm -hmm. Hebrews, just to link now, because because really, what we see there is you'd almost think for a moment that Jeremiah's fate was a bit extinguished, even though he, you know, he's he's prophesying about this all the time. But now it's come to pass. Now it's happened. It's very different when you have to live through something. That's your telling somebody that's going to happen. You tell people when they get born again to walk in the spirit. 
don't become like the dog that goes back to its vomit. And then they do. And you're like, come on, come on. Um, in, in the Hebrew 6, in the first few verses, and I might do this, we started last week, I want to look at the, the doctrine in the fellowship each week. So we looked at the word of God, but the first few verses talk about going back to the first, the first principles, which is really a lot of our doctrine. And he's, he's talking about people that have to keep going back to this, or people that have stopped persevering or walking on this, what kind of gifts. And then he goes and he says, in verse 9, he says, but beloved, we are persuaded better things of you. He's talking to you and I. He's saying, you're not like that. You've settled it in your heart to see the distance. You've settled it in your hearts to see the distance. We're going through with this. Yes, we want to be the soldiers that will fight every day. And that's what Paul is speaking, maybe Paul, so Brother Aaron probably wrote Hebrews, but for the most part. And uh, uh, things that accompany salvation, though we thus speak, for God is not unrighteous to forget your works and your labor of love. He sees it. He knows what it's like to be you, true his son, which you have showed towards his name and that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. You look out for one another. You see when the countenance is down. You pump them back up. Um, and he says, and we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence. Just give it your best shot. It's all the Lord ever has. Diligence means to give it your best, not to be slothful. To the full assurance of hope to the end. Of hope to the end. That there's a link here between hope and faith. Because faith is very much um, linked here with hope. And that you be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. This perseverance, this, this project of developing your hope and your faith to the very end. Not to let anyone rob it. Might, the, the flame might go down every now and again. Get the old coal on the fire. Like Tony on the, in the winter when we're over and having the house meetings and he throws on an old log. Throw on a log. Maybe you need a log today to throw on the old fire. Maybe, you, you know, you've stopped the practice of patient endurance. Patient waiting. Because they're the people that will inherit the promises. It's not the people that stopped in the wilderness. The people that have seen it through to the end. Abraham has seen it through to the end. And quickly over to Hebrews 10. Boom, 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 boom. Press the fast forward button. In verse 22, it says, I'm going to read this in the Amplified. Let us come forward and draw near with a true, honest, sincere heart in unqualified assurance. Now, in the hope in the world, you do not get an assurance. It might happen and it mightn't happen. That's the thing about hope in the world. There's uncertainty with it. And what the Lord is trying to say. Is actually in my word, there's actually certainty. There's an assurance. Who else is going to give you an insurance policy like that? Mm. Who else is going to assure you that if you stick with him, he's going to rain his promises? He's going to see you through to the end. And it goes on to say, an absolute conviction engendered by faith. That's the point, is the faith has to be linked with the hope. And behind all of them, of course, is love, which we looked at a few weeks ago. That you would lean your entire human personality on God in absolute trust and confidence. The more you can do that, the more I can do that, the more you're secure, the more you're assured, the less fear you have. Because fear is what kills your faith. Then some of what kills your faith, trying to undermine you. You live in an environment where it's always trying to 
the, the wiles of the devil trying to undermine God's word, undermine the, 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 what God has done for you. And that's what I was saying about trying to battle right at the beginning about when that uh, ended. The heart is sick when hope is deferred. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. You can write away and I'll really answer. Mm -hmm. um, so let us seize and hold fast and retain without wavering the hope which we cherish and confess and our acknowledgement of it. For he who promised is reliable, sure, and faithful to his word. And let us consider and give atten atten attentive continuous care to watching over one another, studying how we may stir up, uh, stimulate to, to love and helpful deeds and notable activities. And then it goes on to say, not forsake the assembly of ourselves. So there's a, there's a huge fear in that. You know, again, the river of, of hope or the sea of hope, not to waver. Don't become like we see in the first part of Hebrews chapter six, six because people were sick because they became shipwrecked. And we can still get back onto the onto the onto the river of life. The time and the stops are starting to get closer and closer. That's a, seems to be the reality. And, and we've got to provoke each other to love. We're on God's side, it's not gonna let us down if we if, you know, how do you lean your whole personality to the Lord? It's a difficult one, isn't it? How do you lean? But that's where that battle in the soul is going on. You know, and if you feel down, that's what you got you to gotta look at. Because uh, we're cleansed by the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Elsewhere in Romans, it's the Holy Spirit that strengthens the inner man, that renews your mind. It gets rid of the pollution. You have to go through so much pollution of the world. Um, Hope is faith in a future sense, but it's a strong confidence. That's what kills the doubts of faith, you know. Um, for the sake of time, let's go to the last scripture. Uh, I'll quickly read in Jeremiah 17. Blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. I think of one more in Psalm 33, sorry. Just these scriptures. And again, sometimes, you know, when you're at home and you might be going through a, a bit of a time, sometimes this that's if you could sum up the Psalms, I think you gain hope from it. So where David's in these moments of weakness or his moments of darkness or being down or heavy. He, he kind of brings it around to the Lord where he gets the hope that the, it's like just this flicker of light. You know, I just need a little flicker of light and then I'm off again. It will open it up and, and broaden it. And then Romans 15 and verse 13, badly running out of time. It says, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. I'll we'll read that again. Now the God of hope, that's what he's called. He's got a few, lots of different things. Father of all mercies. But this one's now the God of hope. Again, I like him. God, he just sends that rope that you need to grab onto. Just at the right moment, hope to cling onto sometimes when it's, a, it's not going so good. Fill you with all joy. The joy of the Lord is your salvation. Don't let anything up. that falls, then the hope falls, then the love falls, and, and that's where the other things come in, the hardness, the bitterness, and stuff like that. So you you, you gotta you gotta keep, you know, it says faith, love, and hope. It, 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 that trinity in itself has, is is all very much linked. And if one of them falls, it pulls down the other ones. So that's not to condemn us, that's, that's to get them back up again. And so now the governor of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing that you may abound in hope or on the fellowship, the ship of hope, through the power of the Holy Ghost. That's what propels us 
is the Holy Spirit. That's what propels this ship of hope, saying to people, get on board. This is the place of hope. This is the place that's going to bring to the harbor of peace, where the God of hope is. And uh, that's a great place to live. The more you can live there, the better it will be for us all. Um, but one of the other things is just to kind of think, when you can pull anything out of this, is God's hope is an assurance. It's, it's, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Sometimes when, maybe even when revival's not happening, it's going to happen. Gives you hope when we say those words. Amen. 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 Okay, what we'll do now.